Hey guys, welcome to today's webinar from Mighty Cause called Building a Donation Page That Works. Um, so before we go ahead and get started, I just want to make sure that everyone can hear me okay and that you can see me moving in between the slides okay. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just chatting in and letting me know that you can hear me. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. So um, today's webinar, I'm really excited about for a couple of reasons, but the biggest one being that this is our first webinar as Mighty Cause. We are no longer Razu. Um, so this might be a little confusing because when you signed up for the webinar, you signed up for a Razu webinar. Um, but the great news is that it's the same team, the same company, the same mission, um, just a new name. So um, all the content that you've come to love from Razu is now part of Mighty Cause, and Mighty Cause will continue to provide you guys with some great editorial content. Um, so good information about uh, fundraising and development and online fundraising. Um, and we'll continue to try to share some best practices that we find on the website as well. So um, if you do have questions about the rebrand from Razu to Mighty Cause, we are having a, uh, a webinar tomorrow with the CEO, Tom Matthews. And so Tom will be answering any questions that you have about the rebrand um, and giving you some exciting updates about new features and things like that. So if you do have questions about that, definitely make sure to check out the webinar um, for uh, Mighty Cause. And I did just get a question that uh, someone asked, will my Razu login still work for Mighty Cause? The answer is yes. And all of your live links that you had for Razu.com will automatically just reroute to MightyCause.com. So um, if you have any other questions like that, definitely feel free to chat them in and I can send them along and we'll address them in the webinar tomorrow. Um, and this is actually a good point for me too, to, to mention if you have any questions as we go through the webinar today, please be sure to chat them in and we will make sure to answer them at the end during the Q&A session. Um, and uh, so, and I will send out in the follow-up link um, or the follow-up email, I will send out the link to register for the demo or for the webinar for tomorrow. Um, but you can also find it just by going to mightycause.com. There's a little uh, pop-up bar that pops up at the top that says, Razu is now Mighty Cause with a link to a blog. If you click on that link, there's a link in there to register if you wanna go ahead and do that right now before you forget. But after the call, I will also be sending that out. Um, so again, you know, Mighty Cause, what's in a name? Uh, we're mightier than ever, but we're still the same mission as Razu um, and still the same group of employees that are very mission driven. Um, so we, you know, we're one of the top nonprofit fundraising platforms. We've been doing this for 12 years. Uh, we've helped nonprofits raise more than, and that says 550 million, but it's actually more than $600 million. Um, and we're the market innovator for giving days and also for premium fundraising subscription plans. Um, so, uh, and our information, our social media handles, if you were following us on Razu Giving, you're now following Mighty Cause, but you can also find us on Twitter or on Facebook at Mighty Cause. So definitely check that out. Um, and who am I? I am someone who will hopefully not call us Razu at all today. Um, but if I do, you guys hold me accountable. Um, so I am Ashley, and if you've been on a webinar for Razu, now Mighty Cause, before, you've probably heard my bio a thousand times and you're probably sick of it by now. Um, but just as a little refresher, I uh, have worked at Mighty Cause for a couple of years now. And uh, before then, I was working at the development department for a pretty large nonprofit, the largest regional um, hunger relief organization in Washington, D.C. And while I was there, I really helped to build out their online fundraising strategies. So this is all stuff that 
fascinates me that I love talking about and I love sharing best practices from my own work, but also from what we're seeing on the platform with all of you today. Um, so hopefully you'll get you'll come away with some really good information that'll work for you guys um, and for, will work with what you have currently on Mighty Cause or on any other platform. So uh, let's take a look at the agenda for today. First of all, one key element to making a donation page that works is figuring out what do donors want to see or what compels donors to give. So that's the first thing that we'll address is kind of going through that psychology and figuring out why do donors give, what is it on the page that's most appealing to them. Um, next, we'll talk about how to motivate donors through various platforms, whether it's through um, Mighty Cause, through your own website, through social media. So we'll talk about a few tips there. And then, of course, you know, how you can apply these learnings on Mighty Cause. How can you apply them to your own organization page, your own fundraisers that you're currently running on the platform? And then, again, as I said, all attendees are in listen-only mode. So if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to chat them in. And we will get to them at the end during the Q&A. So the first thing that we really need to talk about is why do donors give? And that says, what do donors give? But really, it should, the question is, why do donors give? And there can be a lot of really great reasons for that. There can be a lot of, um, of reasons that maybe you aren't as familiar with. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today is the reasons that people give that maybe aren't as obvious to you as the nonprofit. So, of course, why do donors give? Because a friend asked them to give. That is the number one reason why people give. And that's a reason why peer to peer fundraising is super successful because people want to support their friends. They want to support the people in their life that are making a difference or are trying to reach new goals. And so often, if you see one of those fundraisers floating around on social media, you probably support your friend because you, you support your friend, not necessarily as much about the nonprofit or about the organization itself um, or the mission itself. So that's you know one really compelling reason that donors give. And so if you haven't checked out our resources about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, I would definitely recommend doing that and using that as a great entryway into online fundraising for your organization. And of course, another great reason why people give is that they've benefited from your nonprofit service. So whether it's, um, you know, for me, I actually got involved with a local nonprofit because I bought their cookies while I was in line at Whole Foods. And then I read the back of it and I thought, oh my gosh, this is a great mission. I'm going to get involved with this nonprofit. Um, if you were a recipient at a, a food pantry and now you're, you've gotten on your feet, you may want to help and give back to them um, because you know the great services that they've provided. And even you know, thinking about dogs, if you adopted a dog from a great animal rescue, you may want to then support them and help them get even more dogs adopted to great families. So Thinking about that really personal tie, that's a huge reason why people also get involved with nonprofits and why donors give. Um, and then the last thing, uh, so impulse, of course, having that gamification is a huge draw. Uh, being able to say, you know, today only we're doubling your impact with the matching grant. Um, taking part in a giving day. So if you're in the Tampa Bay area, you should definitely uh, register for Give Day Tampa Bay, which is coming up on May 1st. Um, and if you're, uh, you know, you should definitely check out in your local community what giving events are currently happening or are planned. Two of the busiest times for giving days are in the spring and in the fall. And so that's a great time to get involved, bring in new donors, get some some great um, gamification going for your nonprofit, especially with that online giving element. So think about, you know, who can you encourage to, 
to participate in your giving day? Who can you encourage to give during a giving day? And that's often a great way to encourage new donors to give. Um, there's often prize money involved in the giving event, so make sure uh, to check out what's happening in your local area. But the last thing uh, here, and I think this is a really important one that we can talk about more because it's a little bit broader, is why do donors give? Because they connected with your mission. And that can mean a couple of different things. It could be that, you know, it could be someone like me who I saw this, uh, this package of cookies in line at Whole Foods. And so I bought it and then I read about this nonprofit and I said, I want to help them. I want to volunteer with them. Or it could be that um, they come to your, they found you through your social media advertisements and they really liked the message that you had on your social media ad. Um, so there's a variety of different ways that donors are finding you um, and a variety of different reasons why donors are giving, but the most important thing that you have control over as the nonprofit is connecting donors with your mission. So really taking them across the finish line from learning about your nonprofit, whether it's through a friend, whether it's through a dog that they rescued, and or through a giving event and then connecting them to your mission so that they come back and they create donor loyalty and there can be a lot of barriers especially on your donation page so today we're going to talk about some of the ways that you can build a donation page that will really emphasize your story and reasons um, why donors should be giving and connecting with your nonprofit so of course as i just mentioned one of the key elements here is connect donors with your mission. This is so important. So of course, you know, it it can be really um, difficult to think about a, a good story format, especially for, uh, for a nonprofit because we see so many great success stories. It's hard to find one. Maybe that sounds super genuine, super unique. Um, so the, here are some ways to think about the story. So first of all, telling the story of me, the story of us, the story of now. This comes from um, a Harvard professor who created this, uh, this idea of how to tell a story. And so what that means is telling, you know, for me, I can say, I found this package of cookies at Whole Foods. That's my story. But then when I read about what good this nonprofit was doing in our community, I realized that there were so many women who could benefit from the services that they provide. And the story of now, um, you know, there are a million different ways that we could connect that to, you know, whether it's um, local law laws happening or just helping more women get into the workforce, things like that. There's so many ways to connect that story of me to the story of now. And I encourage you too to think about that unique perspective. So for me as a volunteer, that is a unique perspective. I'm not a beneficiary of the program of that nonprofit that I support, which is a great story to tell and one that can't be told enough, but it does bring in that interesting thing that says, hey, I'm a volunteer. I came across them in the checkout aisle at my grocery store. You can do that too, and you too can get involved and help this really great cause. So think about that, that unique perspective with your storytelling. Also, use visuals to tell your story. This cannot be emphasized enough. People don't like to read text. Um, it's one thing when you get a direct mail piece in the mail, but when it comes to online, uh, people are used to scrolling through their Instagram feeds or their Facebook feeds or scrolling through news sites, and they don't want to see a ton of text. They want you to be able to break it down. They might be on the subway. They might be on the metro. They might be running between meetings. They might be sitting down waiting for a friend to get coffee. They don't have a lot of time when they're looking at the internet on their phone. So they need you to captivate them, to draw them in, and to say it in a way that doesn't use a lot of words. Um, so definitely try to be as visual as possible. And then lastly, of course, use vid videos are huge. Um, we've known this for quite a while, but it's so important to try to use videos wherever possible. Um, there's actually a ton of really great tools available now that you can use to create 
slideshows, which are different than stories because it, it has that animated element to it, but it's still easy enough to put together for anyone, whether they have videography experience or not. So consider looking at a couple of those tools too. Um, you know, again, this stat I think speaks for itself. Um, donors go from being 97% uh, likely to purchase to 139% when they see a video. And what they mean by purchase is just to click through that link and, and complete that process to making that donation. So try to add all of these elements into your donation page wherever you can, um, and that'll really help you to connect donors with your mission a little bit more. So what are those quick keys to great storytelling? First, let's talk about what doesn't work. And some of these I think are gonna be a little bit obvious, some maybe not so much. So of course, cliches. Nobody wants to hear that typical story about, you know, this person was in need, we helped them, and now they're not in need anymore. Get into some more details, explain how their, their situation was unique, or explain how their situation relates to someone else. Was it someone who was, a lawyer who fell on hard times and now they're getting, uh, and now they're the recipient of a food pantry. Is this someone who came, became connected to the food pantry because they were volunteering at an organization next door, came across a woman in need who directed them to this food pantry so they could come volunteer? There's so many different ways to get to the meat of the story without being cliche. Um, of course, another important thing here, personal triumphs, as I mentioned, it's a great way to start the story, not a great way to end the story. People don't really care about you, they care about themselves, um, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, but they want to know how does this relate to me? How can I benefit from this story? So make sure that you're telling the story in a clear way that explains how it relates to people at large or at broad. Um, Again, you know, I think this is kind of emphasized in that no clear impact on the reader point as well. And then lastly, too many details to track. We all have our key messages. We all have those key statistics that we love sharing, that we want to be included in our 30 second elevator pitch. But guess what? For a donor who's either not familiar with your work or doesn't have a lot of time to get familiar with your work, those can really bog down that key important message. Why should I give? Why should I connect with this nonprofit? When you bog it down with a lot of statistics, people don't really connect with that on an emotional level. Pick one key statistic that you're really trying to emphasize and that really makes your broader point. So what are the keys to great storytelling? Of course, having a clear start, a clear arch in the middle, a clear ending, that's across the board, whether you're writing a novel, whether you're writing um, an essay, or whether you're writing your story on your Mighty Cause fundraiser. Secondly, make it relatable. So make your story something that people can connect with. Hey, I was someone just like you before I fell on hard times and I needed help from this great nonprofit. Hey, I was considering adopting a dog, but I had nowhere to start and this nonprofit made it super easy. Think about how you can make your story relate to the average person, to the average donor, and not just that specific audience that you might be thinking about with your specific emails. Um, so email segmentation is a great way to really tell a story that is super uh, segmented, super specific to that audience. That's not the case with a donation page. So make sure you're making it general, making it broader, making it more relatable at large. Um, also, conflict. Every good story has conflict. Every great story has a reason why things might not have worked out. Why did this nonprofit get started? What is that real story that really makes it genuine and makes it an honest story? So what are, you know, don't be afraid to tell donors about some of the the early learnings that you had when your nonprofit was getting started. What are some of the hiccups that you that you had across the across the way that you were trying to learn from and grow from? 
Maybe you realized that you had expanded your um, food distribution too quickly and you didn't have that infrastructure. So now you need to raise money to get more trucks to get your food distributed to other food pantries. Whatever it is, don't be afraid to tell donors, hey, you know, we're having this issue. This is how we're hoping to solve it. Here's how you can help us. And then of course, tie it all back to your impact. Um, so this is really thinking about what is that one piece of information that will really stick with donors that will really emphasize impact. Um, so I always like to tell my own personal story of working at a nonprofit where we were a hunger relief organization. So for us, we provided, what did we provide? We provided food. So how could we convey that in a tangible term to our to our donors um, so every dollar that was donated equaled two and a half meals for people in the community so that was our tangible term if you give us a dollar we're going to put that into the community in the form of two and a half meals that's a huge impact um, and then what how can you use that as a thread for your story so think about you know what if we raise $10,000, that is 25,000 meals that we're putting out into the community. So think about things in that way of how can your key message really thread through the story? How can it really tell the story without getting bogged down in too many key messages, too many facts? So now that we have a good understanding of what connects donors to your mission, how to connect them to your mission, Let's talk about three things that you can apply to your donation page. First of all, keep it simple. You'll notice this slide is very simple. It helps to emphasize that message. Don't distract your donors from making their donation with a lot of other opportunities for them to engage with your organization. So maybe you wanna promote an upcoming event, but you also have a fundraising appeal going on and you also have a really big volunteer opportunity and you're also looking for people to help out with planning your fall gala. That's four different opportunities for people to get involved. And it sounds great to have choices, but that can be really overwhelming for someone who just wants to help, just wants to give. Make it easy. Tell them, here's how you can help right now. You can give us $5 to go towards X, Y, and Z. That'll provide 10 meals for neighbors in need. Whatever it is, keep it simple. Second, make your ask really clear. So this comes from a fundraiser on Mighty Cause, one that's really great. It's from Pause, um, which is an organization, and they're currently running a fundraiser. If you click that link, you'll be able to go visit them, uh, their page on Mighty Cause. But they're doing a fundraiser specifically to get the money to purchase dirt, um, which is really essential to elephants. Um, and it's a, it's a huge part of, of, you know, the survival of elephants. So they're helping out elephants by trying to raise funds. And so for them, they said, every $600 we raise, we get one truckload full of dirt for elephants at pause. That's a great tangible way to remind donors, hey, if you give us $300, you just got us half a truckload of dirt for elephants. And of course, we know that there's some administration costs, truck fuel, things like that. Donors don't care about that. They just want to know, how much am I getting for what I'm giving? And this is a great way to, to emphasize that. Make it easy to give anywhere. So again, you know, most donors these days, most people are on their phones 24-7. So don't send them a link to a web page that's not mobile responsive. Send them a link to your Mighty Cause page, which will make it super easy for them to give on any device. Um, we are mobile responsive. We're actually device responsive, which means you can give on an iPad, you can give on an iPhone, any type of device that has internet access. So make sure that you are making it super easy, eliminating any barriers for people to give. What's, what would be an example of making it difficult for someone to give? It would be something like saying, hey, you should donate to this cause. And they say, great, tell me how to do it. Okay, well, when you get home, first create an account on this website. And then they'll send you instructions. You type in your address. They're going to mail you a form that has a link that you can then go online. 
How many people would actually do that? Not many, um, if anyone. If they do, then you've definitely found yourself a very loyal donor. But definitely think about what is the most, um, what are the fewest obstacles that I can pre present, sorry, present to a donor when they're going to make their donation? So let's talk about how to apply some of those things to your Mighty Cause donation forms. So first of all, the Mighty Cause fundraiser. Creating a fundraiser on Mighty Cause is something that we talk about all the time as a really great way to tell your story. And there's a couple of key elements here that are on any page, on any subscription plan, on our free plan, anything that do a really great job of tying your story together. So first of all, a compelling story that tells the story of me, story of us, story of now. You can see, um, you probably can't read this, but this is for a Boston Marathon fundraiser. This woman um, became involved in the community Rowing Inc. Um, and she has always wanted to run the Boston Marathon. And so she decided to run it in honor of the community Rowing Inc. And uh, her goal is to raise $5,000 to support them as part of her her um, ambition to race in Boston Marathon. So that's a, a great, clear story of me. Then she goes in to talk about the story of us. Who is community rowing? Why is our work important? Then the story of now. Well, the Boston Marathon was actually yesterday, I think, um, or yeah, yesterday was Monday. Um, so the Boston Marathon was yesterday, which means it was super critical for her to raise those funds before the Boston Marathon. So that's just, one thing to consider um, when you're putting your, your fundraiser together is what are those goals? What are those time specific elements that you can tie into your story? Also, a great visual that captivates people, draws them in, weaving pictures throughout your story so that you can really see, okay, it, you know, it might be easier to digest this text if it's not just one solid text block. Also, have a goal that relates to your story. She was hoping to raise $5,000 for this organization. That's the goal that she set on her page. Um, and that's what she ended up exceeding, which is great. There are some other behind the scenes things that you can do for uh, on your Mighty Cause fundraiser. So one of them is adding in a custom thank you message. So when someone makes a donation to my organization, to my hunger relief nonprofit, I can say, thank you so much for your impact. Every dollar that you just gave provided two and a half meals. That's a huge impact. Please help us again by sharing this with two and a half of your friends on Facebook or two of your friends on, um, on, through email and encourage them to give too. So think about what are those ways that you can be weaving it even across the finish line after the donor has made that donation. Creating a custom URL, of course, something more memorable than just a couple of numbers and a couple of letters. Make it really memorable to uh, your donor so that if they're if they are trying to tell a friend on the bus, hey, I just gave to this great nonprofit, you should donate too. Make it something memorable so that if you don't have the link on hand, you can still tell them how to give. And then, of course, check out customization. What are those key levels that you want people to give at? Is it $10 because it provides 25 meals for families in need? Is it $10 because it provides one vaccine for an animal in need? Whatever it is, make sure that you're weaving it through in all the places that you can so that your message really carries through. Next, your organization page on Mighty Cause. So use a compelling background. This is PAUSE, that organization um, that had that really great fundraiser for dirt for elephants. Um, when you go to their page, you are immediately drawn in by this great photo of elephants out in the wild in this beautiful area. So make sure to, to really draw people in with that captivating photo. Of course, tell donors who you are and what you do. How did you get started? What do you do? Um, make sure that donors are, are can understand who you are no matter how they get to your page so don't try to be too campaign specific always keep it broad always keep it general so that the general donor who may not have gone to your um, nonprofit or may not have been familiar with your nonprofit before they went to your 
fundraiser page can still learn about who you are. Um, and then of course, show off your branding in your theme color. Really keep your branding consistent. You want donors to come to your Mighty Cause page and say, this is a fundraiser for PAUSE. You don't want them to see the branding of Mighty Cause and say, oh, who am I giving to again? Where's this money going? So make sure that you're really making it as customized as possible to fit your organization's branding and your organization's logo and, um, and your marketing efforts. And then lastly, uh, or actually this is another piece of the Mighty Cause organization page, Show your donors, what are you fundraising for right now? If you're bringing them to your organization page, what's a way that you can showcase to them what other projects you're fundraising for at this time? So of course you can see here, they have their Dollars for Dirt featured uh, fundraising effort for elephants. They're also doing a project for rescued tigers right now. So try to use the elements on the page to showcase, hey, you can give that general donation to us we would love to have that. But if you're looking for a project that you can specifically support and you can specifically get behind, here's a couple of the ways that you can support us and give donors those options without overwhelming them. With the widget, um, oops, so this is supposed to be a, a GIF, but I don't think it's uh, loading into the PDF properly. Um, but we do offer a widget too uh, which will automatically sync your donor data from your widget to your organization page on Mighty Cause. So make sure um, that you are taking advantage of the widget. Here's how a widget is building a donation page that works. First of all, you're keeping your donors where they are. So whether they came to your website, uh, whether they went to your events page, whether they went to your blog, wherever they went because you sent them there, now they can make their donation without leaving that place. You can also let donors make their donation anywhere, which means our widget you can use on mobile, you can use on any device. So make sure that you're encouraging donors to be, uh, to, or I'm sorry, that you're, that you're encouraging your staff to be using the widget wherever possible so that donors can make their donation um, and, and it's a simple part of the process, simple part of your website. Um, and you can add the Mighty Cause widget to any long form blog. You can add it for your fundraiser, you can add it for your organization page, um, and you can add this to your Medium blog, to your WordPress blog, GoDaddy, any of those. Um, we have the code for both of them. So definitely make sure to be using this to kind of be a nice accessory to the primary focus of what you're trying to talk about on your blog or on your um, events page or whatever it is. And then, of course, this is um, our newest offering, which is part of our premium subscription plans. But this is a great donation form, which does a lot of the things that I talked about today. It keeps it simple. Your general online donation form, which you can get by signing up for a premium plus or a premium uh, pro subscription plan. Your general online donation form drops donors right into the donation flow. They don't have to make that decision about, do I want to give to the organization? Do I want to give to one of their projects? Do I want to check out a team? Do I want to sign up for a volunteer opportunity? You're dropping donors right into the donation flow. It's very obvious that they're making a donation here. The branding, uh, and this is an old screenshot, I think it still says Razu, but it says powered by Mighty Cause very faintly at the bottom, but your branding is the primary focus of this page um, and it's super simple, super streamlined. So you can use this in lieu of your online donation form year round um, and you can still customize your checkout levels. You can even choose what page donors will go to after they're done filling out this form. So definitely, if you're considering having a general online donation form available on your website, I highly recommend checking out the Mighty Cause donation form for a couple of reasons. One, because I think it's a really great, sophisticated way of showcasing uh, your online donations um, ability, but it's also keeping that donor experience consistent. It's the same checkout flow that they would experience on Mighty Cause if they went to the platform or if they went to your widget, 
or if they went to a fundraiser. So no matter where they are, it's that same experience that they're getting across the platform. So before we hop into the queue and take a look at what questions you guys have, I do wanna just quickly review a few things that I think are some simple steps that will help you to build a donation page that will work. So first of all, make your story really compelling so that donors who are looking for a reason will give. Um, and that's, you know, the, the elements that you have control over. You don't have control over whether or not a friend is going to share that fundraiser with their friends um, and those friends will give. You don't have control over whether or not people who have volunteered or, um, or have connected with your nonprofit in some way in a checkout line are going to give, but you do have control over that connection. So making sure that you're really engaging people in a compelling way. Keep it simple. Eliminate those distractions, make your page simple, make the ask clear, keep your messaging really clean, um, don't get bogged down in statistics. And then lastly, leave the technical stuff to Mighty Cause. So use us so that we can take care of tracking your donation information for you. We've done the research. So when you create a fundraiser on Mighty Cause, when you create or when you use your organization page on Mighty Cause, all of our design is research driven. We've done the research. We know um, what user experience is. We know where to place that donate button. Let us do that for you. Let us take care of that research and help you maximize your ability to get donations from those donors. Um, yeah, so with that, I'm gonna take a minute and just hop into the queue, see what questions you guys have, but please feel free to send in your questions and, we'll, and we will address them now. Okay, so we have some good questions. It looks like we have a lot of people on the call who will be um, signing up or who are participating in a giving event on Mighty Cause, um, which is awesome. So one of the questions here is, um, so everything, so the organization pages, creating a fundraiser, all of that is available on our free pricing plan. So everything I've shown you today, excluding that last screenshot of that general online donation form, that's available on our free standard pricing plan. Um, so if you are curious about how to get um, a, um, a premium plus or premium pro subscription plan, definitely reach out to us. Uh, you can email support at mightycause.com. You can email premium at mightycause.com. And I'm happy to set up a demo with you to go over how to get that um, information. Uh, okay. How long should, oh, this is a great question. How long should a nonprofit's video be? So I, I'm sure you all are familiar with Vine, which was a great um, video service. And what a Vine is, um, it, it's no longer in existence, but what a Vine is, is a 10 second video. So think about that. This entire business got started by only allowing people to create 10 second videos. So I would say 30 seconds is a good benchmark, a little bit longer, definitely no more than two and a half minutes. If you're getting longer than two and a half minutes, you might as well turn it into a documentary and see if, uh, see if you can sell it to Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yes, are there any other help pages for setting up our organization page? Great question. Yes, so our blog, our Mighty blog, as we now call it, which is just blog.mightycause.com, has some great resources available to you um, and our support forum you can also find on the blog. We have things like how to make your donation or how to make your organization page look great, how to make your fundraiser look great. There's a ton of really good um, 
articles uh, that are available through the support forum. So definitely check that out. If you looked at it and you weren't sure where to find it, reach out to us at support at mightycause.com and we can share those links with you. Okay. So I think that was it. Um, thank you all so much for, oh, last question here, which, um, which brings us back to Razu versus Mighty Cause. Um, no need to update anything on your current Razu.com link if you have a live fundraiser that started before last week. Um, you can just share that information as is, and it'll automatically redirect people to the MightyCause.com page. So um, it's the same exact page, information stored in the same place. It just changes that link when someone types in Razu.com, takes them to MightyCause.com. So it'll automatically redirect us or redirect um, for, for you guys. But yeah, if you do have specific questions, it looks like someone um, is having a couple of issues with their link. Um, if you are experiencing any issues, definitely, definitely reach out to us at support at mightycause.com. And I will follow up with this webinar um, with a link to the recording. And I will also share with you guys later today um, that link to register for the webinar for tomorrow in case you're interested in just learning a little bit more about the rebranding as a whole. Um, so thank you guys again so much for, for joining me on this hopefully sunnier day wherever you are. We just got out of a massive flood here in Virginia um, and hopefully sunny skies for the rest of spring. Um, if you do have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out to us. We are here to help you and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.